Hi, I'm Tony Petrus. I'm a uh, guest up at Lunge Lodge. I've been coming up there since uh, 2000, and I'm sitting here with Mike Petrie, the uh, manager of Lunge Lodge. And Mike, one of the things I look for in a place to go fishing is, is good fishing. So can you tell me a little bit about what the fishing's like at Lunge Lodge? No, the fishing's excellent, Tony. We have a uh, wide variety of walleye, pike, bass, musky, uh, panfish, a lot of a uh, lot of different species in one one area of water, which is which is kind of nice. It's good to hear because I mean my favorite thing uh, coming up when I first started coming up, I was looking for smallmouth and I was looking for pike. Now I'm getting into musky. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, how the musky fishing's been the last few years? Yeah, the musky fishing's definitely gotten a lot better, in my opinion, in, in the past few years. I've been going up since 1975, and definitely I see an improvement with the size limits, which is 48 inches. Uh, and it's a very, very good place to get a trophy muskie in the 50-inch class. Definitely, uh, if you're looking for a big, big fish, yes. A lot of catch and release is being practiced from what I understand. Uh, what, what's your sense about that? Are, are people following that? Oh, I, absolutely. In the past few years, they've, uh, they've raised the, the slot, uh, the limit to 48 inches, which uh, a lot of people now do not practice uh, catch the muskie, take it home. It used to be 36 inches, which uh, has... Uh, I think in the past hurt the fishery, which now it definitely brought it back. Yes. Now, I know there's a lot of guys that are going to watch this. They're, they're all into walleye. I mean, walleye seems to be a big thing when you go to Canada. So can you talk a little bit about walleye fishing? Walleye fishing's real good. Uh, good time to catch walleye, obviously, is uh, in the late spring in June. A lot of guys just use uh, nightcrawler harnesses, a lot of trolling with crankbaits, that type of thing. Now, one thing I heard is... Uh, uh, when you guys uh, uh, were coming up as, as guests before you before you actually took ownership of the place, you guys put on a bass tournament, and uh, from what I understand, that's that's going to be a pretty popular thing. Yeah, every year we hold a bass tournament in September, and each year the, the bag limit seems to be getting bigger. And uh, last year's bag limit was four fish at 17 pounds, almost 18 wow. pounds of fish. I think one of them was almost six pounds actually. So, and the that's, large that's the large mouth, large mouth though, yeah, right? large mouth fishing has has really boomed in the past few years, in my opinion. And, and the smallmouth fishing obviously is really good up there. Yeah, great. Now I, I bring my own boat because uh, I'm, you know, that's that's the way I like to do it. But you know, I look at the lo the boats that Lunge Lodge has, and I see some nice equipment. What what do you guys uh, what do you guys got uh, as far as the the regular fisherman that's going to come up and uh, and use the boats that you guys have? Yeah, we offer 16 foot Sullivans, and we offer a couple boats that are 18 foot for people that want to bring two or three people to fish in, in the same boat. And we have motors that we just purchased last year, and we have three upgrade boats which, with the troll motors on the front, which a lot of guys want. So obviously. these things are, are really fishing boats. They're laid out for guys that want to fish. Absolutely. They have uh, live wells, bilge pumps, and uh, definitely equipped for fishermen. Okay. Absolutely. Another thing I look for when I look for a place to go to Canada is, is you know, wilderness is great. You know, as far as the, the scenery and, and the structure, to me there's just enough cabins and buildings to know where you're at instead of getting lost. But uh, what's, your, what's your feeling about uh, the the, the the atmosphere of the of the French River. Well, uh, definitely. While you're out and about on the river, you can see wildlife, deer, bear. The terrain is is a very rocky terrain. It's uh, the, an underwater mountain system in the river. Um, definitely a, a place with very good scenery, and and you kind of get lost. It's not even a matter of fishing. You just uh, sometimes you just just look instead of just fish, you know, so. Okay, Mike, I come out of Northeast Ohio, I drag my own boat, it takes me about 10 hours to get up there. Can you talk a little bit about the location of Lunge Lodge? Because it's, it's up in the North Country, and, right. uh, but uh, traveling wise, it's not too bad to get there. Right, it's located about four hours north of Toronto, and main points, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, 10 hour ride. Definitely pulling a boat, you're going to have a 10 hour drive no matter what. It's pretty much four lane highway all the way up there, and that, uh, that new cut around, around uh, uh, Toronto, around the, uh, uh, what is that called? The 407 uh, the 407, ETR. yeah. Uh, that, that's really nice. That saves a lot of time. But you're really on a four-lane highway all the way up until you, uh, until you get to 64. Right, right. They've done a lot of improvements up in Canada uh, in the past 10 to 15 years on the highways. And definitely safer, a lot safer drive than it used to be. When you get off of 64, you have a 16-mile dirt road that you drive down to get to Riverview Marina, Docus Reservation. And upon arrival, you'll pick up your fishing license, and they will call us at Lunge Lodge, and we will come pick you up in a pontoon boat with your luggage and your group of people that you, uh, that you come with. Okay. And then once, once we get over to the lodge, normally there's people there that uh, unpack the boat for us. That's always a nice touch. You know, we, we get off our boat, and there's a horde of people there, it seems like. I mean, there's only two or three of you there, but uh, you guys pick up the equipment, you get it into our cabin. 
Right, right. And we, upon arrival, uh, somebody will bring you over, and we will unload your luggage into your cabin, and go over with uh, go over anything you need to go over with, as far as information on uh, on the boats, uh, safety. All that stuff. Tell me a little bit about the cabins, because you know, uh, I, I remember the first time going to Canada. All I really cared about is the fishing good, and is there going to be a roof over my head so I'm dry uh, when I'm sleeping? So talk a little bit about your cabins, because yeah, I think that's I think that's a big point about Lunge Lodge. Yeah, you'll definitely stay dry. Our, our cabins have have beds, uh, refrigerators. Uh, a couple of our cabins are equipped for housekeeping with stoves. Uh, all of them have sinks, showers, toilets, just like being at home. It's nice to come off the lake, uh, get into a nice hot shower, clean off the clean off the mess, and then get into the main lodge and get your dinner. Yes. Uh, talk a little bit about dinners. What 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 uh, what dinners are like at Lunge Lodge? Uh, dinners are all home cooked meals, and our our uh, our cook Mary definitely takes care of you. And any special requests you need, she'll take care of you. And you get uh, a hot breakfast, and you can pack a lunch, and you don't have to come back in till four o'clock, and uh, and you'll have a hot supper. So. Mike, one of the things I really enjoy about the meals is that Tuesday uh, fish fry at the lodge. Can you talk about that when you come in on, after a long day? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, every Tuesday we have a, a cookout with hamburgers, hot dogs, and a, and a big fish fry. Um, and there's all kinds of finger foods to eat. And it's a, it's a real nice time. Everybody enjoys it being outside and uh, gives you plenty of time to get back out fishing at the, after dinner. So, yeah, Speaking of fishing after dinner, I mean, uh, it, it, during the summer months it stays light. Uh, late, you know, in, until like 10 o'clock and maybe even a little bit later. Uh, what's it like navigating on the river after dinner in, as you head into the evening? Definitely don't want to stay out after dark unless you do know the river and reading maps is, is very important. Definitely don't want to be too far from the lodge after dark anyway. Fishing's very good in the evening, but we do, we do uh, practice caution as far as being out after dark, yes. Now another thing that's a big selling point for the lodge from my perspective is that fire that you have at night. You know, yeah. you come in after a long day, you go to your cabin, you kind of clean up, and then you head out to the campfire, and it seems like everybody in camp is sitting out there talking about stories about the day. Can, uh, where did that start, and uh, you know, how long has that been going on, the, the big fire out there in the front of the lodge? Yeah, it's definitely a good, a good selling point as far as uh, when people come to the lodge, they definitely want to have a campfire. So uh, we make sure that there's firewood, and it gives a chance for people to unwind and talk about their day and tell fish stories and the ones that got away. So. Mike, let's talk a little bit more about the fishing. Uh, one of the things that I've always said about the French River that, that I really like is no matter which way the wind's blowing any given day, you always got a place that you can be on the backside of the wind if that's the kind of fishing that you like to do. Uh, it's loaded with bays and coves and, you know, as far as the species that you go, you, you can switch from fishing for pike to fishing for smallmouth to fishing for muskie, uh, go, go down for some walleye, whatever you want to do. But uh, can you talk a little bit about what the water system itself is like? Yeah, definitely. If you're out pike and muskie fishing and you're out on a numerous reefs that, that cover the river system, you'll be out on a five foot reef surrounded by 60, 70 foot of water. And uh, suppose the wind starts blowing too hard or the weather gets bad, numerous bays and inlets and channels to go down to get out of the wind. Definitely uh, very diverse waterway. You could definitely fish different areas, different habitats all within a mile's range. And it's not all rock structure, too, that you're fishing on. I mean, there's a lot of rock, I mean, yes. obviously, because it's Canadian Shield, but, uh, I mean, the cabbage weeds and, and the, uh, the the coontail, you know, it's a good, good source of uh, weed cover for the fish. Oh, yeah, excellent. Uh, definitely the vegetation is very good. Definitely cabbage weed is the main weed in the river. A lot of lily pads, a lot of milfoil, and uh, like I said, you can get in the back bays and, and hit the lily pads and catch a largemouth, and then head out to the main points and catch smallmouth on the deeper reefs. And I know you get a lot of guys with a lot of different uh, skill levels as far as the fishing goes. Uh, you know, I myself, I, I, I fish really fast. I mean, I, I can't slow myself down, but uh, I catch fish when I come up there. Uh, talk about, you know, some of the different tactics that guys are using to catch the different kinds of fish. Well, a lot of guys uh, throw big baits for the muskie, of course, and you, a lot of guys are throwing suics and uh, a lot, all the jerk baits, uh, a lot of bucktails. Um, a lot of top water fishing for, for muskie and pike, and definitely bass. Uh, if you get in the back bays, definitely have to throw a top water. One of the things I, uh, you know, as far as the water system goes, I, I'm, I'm a fast fisherman. I mean, I'm always spinner baits and crank baits. I'm, I'm going, I'm working fast all the time, but I notice you're one of those slow, methodical, pick it apart kind of guys. And, you know, let's talk about the differences between uh, those two approaches to fishing because uh, everywhere you go, it all looks good, and there's got to be a tactic that works, uh, works better in one situation or not, but it all looks good. Right, and, and you know when you're fishing, fish are more active at certain times of the day and weather patterns, and uh, so if you need to get into deep weeds, 
and you need to fish slow, there's, there's plenty of opportunity for that. And if, you, if the fish are really active and you need to buzz over top the weed beds or over top the reefs, definitely uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of different opportunities up there as far as lure selection and, and, te and, and techniques. What's your favorite thing to fish for up there? My favorite fish to fish for yeah. is muskie, obviously. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Muskie. Yeah. But uh, you, can't, you can't beat the smallmouth in between the muskie. No, of course. Uh, when the muskie fish is slow, you can always go and, uh, and, and keep yourself busy with largemouth and smallmouth. Yeah, I've noticed largemouth fishing has really picked up. I mean, the, the yeah. size of those things is, is starting to get incredible. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a walleye guy. I don't, I don't slow myself down enough to do walleye, but uh, every once in a while, they hit those musky lures, and there's some big ones in there. Can you talk about uh, the, the, musky, the, the walleye fishery? Uh, as yeah, it goes yeah the, the walleye fishing is, is, is very good. Uh, a lot of guys focus on the main channel and fishing the, the up and down reefs out there. Uh, certain times of the year, they're in the back bays, and then during the summer, they're actually deeper. How deep do you have to go to get these walleye? Uh, it ranges anywhere. Sometimes they're in the edge of the weed beds, and then sometimes they're in 50 foot of water. So it's, uh, it's just a matter of finding them different, different times of the year, basically. Hey, let, let's switch gears again. I, you know, I mentioned earlier, I bring my own boat up. You guys make it very accommodating for somebody to bring their own boat up. Can you talk about the, the dockage facilities that you have, the, the power uh, outlets that you have, et cetera? Yeah, we have plenty of electricity outlets for uh, extension cords and your battery chargers and our docks are close to the cabins. And I know when I tie off my boat uh, at night, I don't worry about anything. I mean, right. the boat's there, all my equipment's in there. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the, uh, the security that, uh, that, that the lodge really affords to the guy that comes up for, for a, a short trip or even a, a week-long trip? Yeah, it's pretty comfortable. Definitely, uh, you don't have to worry about any of your equipment. You can leave it in your boat or take it inside, however you want to however you want to do that. Oh, Mike, it's been great talking to you about Lunge Lodge. Uh, as I said earlier, I'm, I've been going up since 2000, going twice a year. I'm looking forward to going twice again this year. I know that I can get a hold of Lunge Lodge either through the website, lungelodge.net. I can call you at 705-763-2317. There's a social networking page on the website. There's contact information. Is there anything I'm missing that I, that I need to tell the folks at home that are watching this? Well, you can go on the website and, and go on a social network, which uh, you can talk to people every day and uh, and find out updates at the lodge every day. So if you're at home and you want to know how Lunge Lodge is doing in the summer, you can go right to it. That website's great because I know there's a lot of people holding up big fish. I think, yes. uh, I think I might know a few of those people that are holding up those big fish. Yes, you're one of them. And there's, there's, yeah, there's many photos on there and you can actually put your own photos on there uh, also. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of great stuff on that, uh, on that website. So, hey Mike, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for, uh, thanks for meeting with me talking and for the folks at home, it's been great. I'll let you wrap it up. Well, thanks for watching and hope to see you on the river.